My name is Melinda Calway, and we're going to work on another card today. It seems to be quite popular. It's a nice thing to be able to do because it's small, and I'm working with a, a 100% uh, cotton rag paper. This is uh, 140 arches, uh, just regular. And I just got a little piece of it, so, which I'll fit on a card later on. But I'm going to do um, a tree. I'm going to try and make it a little bit abstract today. Just kind of have fun and make it quick and get some instant gratification. I'm going to start off by just spraying a little bit of water. Not a lot, just a little bit of water on there. And I'm going to put in my sky in the background. I'm going to start off... Oops, palette here. <clears throat> I'm going to start off with some blues. I'm going to mix up this manganese blue. A little bit of cobalt blue. And again, let's just have fun. Let's have fun with colors. I'm going to get some bright colors today. Um, I've done a few of these YouTube videos, so if you want to check out my YouTube channel anytime, I've got other ones, tutorials, and some hyperlapse with voiceover to explain what I'm doing. Um, so feel free to take a look at them and <clears throat> let me know what you think. Uh, you can give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the page, or do a comment and let me know what you think. And if you have any questions, would be great. So here I'm mixing up some colors now, so I've got some blues. I'm also going to put in some um, yellows. This is raw sienna. Raw sienna is very similar to yellow ochre, but I find raw sienna is a little bit more transparent, which I quite like. Uh, I'm going to put in some of this yellow. I'm not exactly sure. It's a Winsor Newton color. Uh, it, I think it might be a Winsor Newton raw sienna too, which is even a little bit more transparent than the da Vinci that I'm using here. So I've got some of that, and let's put a little bit of cadmium orange. Bring in a little bit of that. And <clears throat> the great thing about when you're mixing and making cards, you don't need a whole lot of paint because it's a small surface. So this makes it a little bit easier to mix your colors and, and takes a lot less time. So I'm going to start off by pouring a little bit of blue. I'm going to start off with this and throw it in the sky, putting some water in. And uh, I'm going to paint a tree. The whole thing is a, a, a tree. Now I've drawn a tree on here, and I hope I'm not going to cover it too much with my paint so they can't see all the great lines that I've already put in. So we're throwing in some blue, keeping some of it light, some of it dark, and I just want to make it dramatic, and I want to make it fun. It's an experiment. See what happens. If it turns out great, wonderful. If it doesn't, it's only a little piece of paper, and I had fun doing it. Neat to get that instant gratification. Okay, let's see. Let's put in a little bit of this. Is this is horizon blue? It's always lighter at the horizon, so I'm going to fill in <coughs> a little bit of horizon blue. And this is um, ultramarine blue. It took me a while to think about that for a second. Anyway, so I'm putting that near the top because near the top of the page. Is always the part that's closest to you, and the part that's closest to you is always darker in color. If you look at the sky, the part that's straight above you is darker, and that as you get down to the horizon, it gets to be a little bit lighter. So I'm throwing that in there. I don't really want any wakes in there. Let's keep it up. Now I'm going to put in some of the yellows. Eh, that's going to be who knows, a brush or something in the background. And where the yellow and blue meet, I might get some green, but I'm trying not to get too much of that. I don't want, I don't want some green in the middle. But hey, if it happens, it happens. Let's not worry about it too much. Put some orange in there too. Got it here. I'm kind of halfway. I'm trying to make it not quite halfway, but. Uh, We'll bring some of that up there too. So that I don't want it to be half sky and then half the other. I want it to be more one third, two thirds. So I'm sneaking some of this yellow up into the sky so that it doesn't um, feel halfway. Yeah, let's put some orange down here. I think what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to have some some greens and I'm probably going to put some flowers in. So let's just, just throw some, 
goes in here. Again, don't worry about it. Whatever turns out, turns out. And we'll get some green in because if there's flowers, there's always some green. This green here is a, a green made by G. Graham and it has honey in it. So it, it, uh, it doesn't mix well with other greens, but it's not a bad color. i got to use it up. That's why I'm using it. This is a little bit of leaf green, which is a nice light green. You can make your own leaf green by adding yellow to other greens. But I'm always a fan of if the company's going to make it for me. I'm quite happy if I like the color. If not, I will either mix it with others or not buy it. Let's get some green down in here. I'm using a number six brush. It's a, a round brush. Uh, it, it's big enough for a card like this but it also has a bit of a tip so if I want to make some smaller lines I can do that. Get some other colors in here. So see how it's bleeding into each other and I'm quite okay with that. I'm trying to make it a little abstracty so watercolor does its thing I'm I'm okay. And I'm going to leave a little bit of white down in and amongst here because I think it will add a little sparkle to it. Just spray a little water on it. It'll add a little texture. Now I'm probably going to dry this so that the video doesn't take so long, but before I do, I know it's going to dry lighter, so I'm going to throw some more dark into the sky here. And this is the ultramarine blue. So I'm going to put that in. I'm going to let that bleed right off the page and I'll wipe it up after. Okay, so just I like my corners to be fairly dark because I don't want your eye to go out of the corner. So good. And this is definitely bled up, so this is not halfway anymore. This is a good one-third, two-thirds, which is good proportions, because if it's halfway, it's not as interesting. Um, that rule of thirds that we use in art all the time is, um, I find, for the most part, works. There's always exceptions to every rule, but for the most part, I find that works quite well. Okay, just throw some more of this green down in here. I'm going to put some dark green in. This is perylene green, it's really dark, so again, let's darken up those corners. Keep your eye onto the painting. Okay, so a little bit of dark here and there. And this is kind of my background color. I'm going to do some other things to it. But if I let it dry on its own, which you should do, is it's way better because it will granulate and you'll get some really interesting effects there. There's also granulation fluid that could be fun to use, so I'm going to shut the video off for a second and go get some granulated fluid and put some on. It's still wet. This is granulating fluid. And I'm going to just use a metal spatula. Take a little bit out and just drop some on. I want to see what happens. I'm going to put some in the sky here and there. Again, I'm experimenting. I'm having fun. It's not, granulating fluid is not something people have on hand very often, so you might have to just see what happens with mine. I don't advise you just to go out and buy it for, to try it unless you want to. Um, I have it because I've done classes where we've tried different uh, mediums and techniques and that's what I purchased it for. I really don't use it a lot in my normal painting, but let's just throw that on there and see what happens. I am going to use a hair dryer to speed this up a little bit. so. That will make the um, granulating a little bit less. So granulating the medium, this is a Windsor Newton product. And um, again, it comes in the store. It's not that cheap. But again, if you want to try different things, it could be fun. I'm going to dry this. Okay, so I've dried this now. And uh, as with any painting, you never know what it's exactly going to look like until you finish. So let's just wait and see. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of brownish color now and do the tree, just to get that in there. So this is burnt umber. And I'm just mixing it right there with the color that's already had, because it's close enough. And let's put a little bit of ultramarine over here too, so we can get some darker color as well. Just put a little blue in there. 
Okay, let's start with that. So I've got the tree kind of drawn. I can't see a lot of it, so I'm going to bake it where I can. And up the top part, I'm going to spray just a little bit. I'm going to spray a little bit too much there, so we will just dab. See what happens. But I want it to be interesting, and if you wet it like this, it, it will... Um, change directions and do really interesting things. So let's, let's see what happens. And with this painting, I've decided I'm going to try using a little bit of gold paint. Um, Windsor Newton, no, this is actually Holbein. Holbein makes a, a gold paint uh, and a small tube, and it's actually gold and it's, it's iridescent and shiny. And quite nice. It is a watercolor paint. So I'm going to use some of that. Again, a little abstracty, just to be fun. And where the, tr the grasses and trees come up, I'm, I'm trying to make this go down a little bit so the tree goes down beyond where the grass comes up. And I'm going to make my light kind of coming from this way. I'm making the side of the tree a little bit darker. I'm going to switch brushes to a rigger in a minute because as the branches get smaller, it's easier to get a rigger going on that. I'm trying to make the, the branches look like they change in direction and make it a, <clears throat> an interesting tree. Let's get the rigger out. This is a zero rigger, so it's quite thin, but because I'm using a fairly small piece of paper, it works quite nicely. And I'm going to put some green on top of the tree too, so let's just change the direction. I want this to look like an interesting tree. It is actually an apple tree. I'm going to take a picture. Apple trees are really gnarly and they have some really interesting shaped branches. So, and the spraying kind of helps with that a little bit. I'm going to let that dry up a little bit before I put the green on because I think if I put the green on I'm just going to get a, a mud bath happening here. So I'm going to put a few more branches in and then I'm going to work on the bottom part a little bit and let the top part dry. Okay, so for the bottom, <clears throat> throw a little bit more red flowers on here. Trying to keep some of the white. I want to keep that, that white happening. I'll put some yellow on too. Don't have any yellow in here yet? And I like all the colors. So. Because I didn't save spots for the yellow. If I put yellow where white is, it'll show up as a yellow. But if I put yellow on the other one, it won't show up that great. I am using hence a yellow, yellow. Um, because it is a little bit more opaque, so it will show up better on top of the colors that I have rather than Oreolum, which is uh, more of a transparent color, so you will see the other color underneath it more. So again, just, just playing, just throwing it on here and there. And let's, let's bring some orange in. Humidify that and bring something up higher. Orange over here too. So I'm just playing. Put that seeds here some green. This is the, the green again. And if I'm putting it on down here, it will end up with me looking a little bit darker because I'm mixing it with other colors for one thing but also because it's going on top of something else. Let's take the green. Um, so I've got the rigor again, the zero rigor, and I'm just going to bring in kind of some stems here and there. And 
and grassy type stuff. I'm thinking this looks a little plain now, so I think I might throw some, I don't know, something in there. Let's throw some green. It looks like there's some trees back in there. I'm kind of making a little landscape here. This is getting a little drier, so I'm going to consider putting some green on that tree. I'm rolling my brush around so I get more surface area faster. And I want to make sure I leave some sky holes. I don't want to cover up all that beautiful sky that I just worked on. Maybe some darker greens and some lighter greens. Down in here. Bring your eye back down in here. Some dark greens down here. So as an artist, we're making you're moving the viewer's eye around. Using some lighter and some darker greens. The side's a little darker, so I'm going to put some darker down around here. But I'm leaving lots of space. I want to. I want you to. I want the viewer to see um, the great branches that are in between there. I'm putting the green on the bottom part and on the right part here because I got my sun coming from this way. Pretty much have a little bit of a landscape happening right now. Now I want to play with this gold. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of this gold. I'm opening up the tube and putting a little bit in the corner of my palette. I don't know if you can tell, but it is quite iridescent. Now I'm going to splatter the gold on. I think, or maybe I'll put some down in here first. Put some on the tree. I don't know if you'll be able to see this in the video, but I'm going to spatter some up here. Okay, I'm going to put some little lines of, of gold. Move it throughout the picture so that I don't want this in one spot. I want it to be rather unified. Mixing up a little bit of red here. It is an apple tree, so I'm going to throw a little bit of red in, in there. It doesn't look exactly like apples, but... Adds a bit of color to the upper part of the painting and unifies the whole thing. Again, less is more. You don't want to put too much in, so it kind of gets to be fun and it's hard to stop. It's really hard to stop. Okay, um, put a little bit more red down in here because I do like red. I'm going to let it dry now. Okay, so I used the hair dryer and I dried this and I was looking at it as I was drying it and I was thinking, I think I want some little twigs down in here, little branchy type twigs. So I'm going to just throw a few of those up to give this bush down here some context. Make it feel like it's grounded. And throw a few more branches up in here. I like using a rigger brush. It's a, it gives you such wonderful lines. Very calligraphy like and very. So 
ornamental. Organic is the word I was trying to think of. Yeah, it will look darker on this side. Eh, stop it. When I sign these, I usually use a pen to sign it. And you can use a colored pen or a black pen. I think in this case I'll use a black pen. Number three. Make sure it works. Um, so I'm just going to make sure it's not wet where I'm signing. I'm just going to sign right in here. Sometimes put a piece of tape down to keep it straight, but I don't have a piece of tape close at hand, so I'm going to go without the tape. And when I do cards, I just put my first name. Got that in there. Um, it's still a little bit wet, but I think <clears throat> I can still go ahead with my putting it in the card. So if you've seen my last card video, you know what to do. Um, if you haven't, then you can take a look at this. So the card goes this way. I'm going to line it up, just eyeball it. Um, now, if you find that it's a little bit warped, uh, you can iron it a little bit. Just turn it upside down. Give it a little press with a little bit of steam. Um, just very quickly, you don't keep it on, you don't want to burn it. But it is, if you're using arches, especially 100% cotton, so it's like ironing a cotton shirt. So I've lined it up, and I'm just going to put little dots on either side. So they know where to cut. Just move it a bit, straightening it back out. And I've got a metal ruler and a little box cutter, and I'm just going to cut between the dots. Okay, it's getting a little dull, so if that ever happens, the bottom of your box cutter comes off, and there's a little slit in there. You slide it in there, and you can just snap. Generally easier than that. Snap off that little point so the next point is really sharp. Okay, let me put that back on. And hopefully the next cut will be a little bit easier. It's always good to have sharp tools. If they were meant to be sharp. Oh, a little bit further. You don't want to go all the way off, so you want to be very controlled when you do this. And people were asking about what kind of card that I have. These ones I had made up by a printer, but you can also just get some card stock and cut it to the right size that you want and then just fold it. So you can get card stock at Staples or probably very many other stationery type stores. So I've got my little slits. Um, this is pretty dry now. I'm going to put those in. And you've got a card. You can send it to a very special friend um, or do whatever you want with it. So, right, nice greeting card. Um, very simple to make and a lot of fun. When you do artwork, it makes you feel good about yourself. It's um, If you're an artist of any kind, it's something that you've got to do in order to um, get, that, get the creative juices flowing. So uh, try it. Enjoy it. Um, again, Feel free to comment on the YouTube video and uh, um, check out my other videos if you're interested. Thank you. Have a great day.